18. <coughs> you can swear that at the edge of your vision at the last possible moment, you think you saw a silhouette like disappearing on a rooftop, but you blink and you can't really be f like certain, like you can't really say for sure. And it was like on a building that's like not next to you, but like in a like distance, like I'm talking, you know, 100, 150 feet away. Okay. The werewolf comes. <laughs> it goes back to walking back in the night. All right. Do anything about it? I mean. All right. I uh, just wanted us to be sure. Do you, as a player, have like any destination in mind, or do you perhaps like waiting in, in case something uh, else happens? Or Silas? I mean, I'm a guard, so until it's my break or whatever the equivalence of like the next day i'm just gonna keep doing my thing walking around okay trolling i f okay so i might add like a small like lower bit like because of how the time is tracked or rather how hard is it to track time and uh, basically the only like good way of people like figured out the good way of like figuring out like how much time has passed is like the sun mostly doesn't exist, but there's this ugly wound that sometimes, like, once or once every so often, that's like a small flare that doesn't light up the entire world, but gives you, like, a feeling of, like, a dying breath uh, of a sun. And people just figure out that they might as well call it, like, ev between every, like, pulse. Let's call it pulse. Uh, like 12 hours pass. Uh, so basically people for the most part are, unless they have like different type of work, they are working in 12 hour shifts. Yikes, oh. dude. <laughs> and sure there are, you know, exceptions and for some it's like work. Un until you do not have to, like, there's nothing else for you to do, and you can just, you know, take a break there. Uh, but yeah, I I imagine, unless you guys have, like, different ideas and want to, like, to adjust the, uh, the lore a little bit, that, yeah, guards have to be, like, sturdy and conditioned, because their shifts are, uh, are long. And actually... A mechanic how I play it that Captain Lastimosa and even uh, Rolf that survived this ordeal and will be definitely using veteran NPC uh, stats in the future uh, <laughs> is that uh, they are immune to exhaust exhaustion. They cannot be exhausted as a condition. That's interesting. That's good stuff. Yeah, because when you have to do deal with 12 hour shifts, your body like Either Adjust. makes it, either makes it, makes it or breaks it. True. Or however the saying yeah. goes. It's like a boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I basically like imagine that after the war, those who survived are like, you know, the toughest of the tough. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Uh... Even the commoners here could beat up like a regular NPC. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you can think that basically the commoners here, like, even the basic ones. Greater commoner. Like, yeah, greater, <laughs> greater or hardy commoner. Like, mechanic-wise, basically only, like, the children, like, kids, yeah, like, youngsters without any experience at all, they're, like, using basic commoner stats, but mm -hmm. others, yeah, like, greater commoner at the minimum. Because that's what life demands, because... In a situation, if the undead <laughs> break through, everyone fights. Not only the guard, not only the. Uh, I mean, in the in the city of hope, like the city guard is like synonymous with the night watch. Basically, people mm -hmm. call like the guard night watch essentially. Uh, yeah, because push comes to solve, everyone will have to fight. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah. 
so one last question to uh, Silas. Uh, and if not, I have a different idea what uh, you will uh, find along the way. Would you perhaps during your, you know, walks and perhaps like I mean, if your shifts end, would you gravitate also towards the black smithery or not really? No, I, I have to take the job as is, so everything falls under the same pretense and like same ruling. All right. Okay, uh, so I'll get to back in a, in a moment. There's definitely one thing that you'll be uh, like called to as you're like guard on on duty. Uh, however, uh, yeah, uh, Vale and uh, Sasa, and obviously the old Smithy who. Uh, hearing that uh, there was an attack, he's in a very sour mood as he's constantly grumbling that how much armor he'll have to like, not dent, but uh... oh my god, I'm blanking on the word. Like bang into place and whatnot. Yeah, bang into place, like how many swords will have to be sharpened. <laughs> Uh, and Vale's just there, like, it's alright, I'll help. <laughs> Don't worry, it won't be so bad, we've had worse. <laughs> As he fires swords in the forge and bangs them into the correct positions. You know, boy, what I would give to be like 50 years younger and have your optimism. Vale <laughs> will just smile and say, well... You might not have it, but you can experience it. Maybe it'll be contagious. <laughs> and he'll smile over at him. Don't try to flatter me, boy. It will not save you from harder hard work. I know. <laughs> in, in this business, you either learn or you can piss off. We don't take Things by half measure here. He'll take some armor, some scale mail, and start molding the scales into place, and he'll say, Well, I think I've learned quite a lot from you. You better! Or I'll be very angry with you! <laughs> because I'm an excellent funny. teacher! <laughs> I really know, not, I've but... learned pretty quickly! <laughs> and he'll not open it. <laughs> He's like, it's okay, old man. <laughs> uh, yeah, where I put it again? Oh, there it is. Of course, I haven't forgot. I'm extremely cranky old geezer <laughs> that is like, uh, oh my back. You are handling the heavy armor. I don't worry. I got it. I'm told for this <laughs> like shit. Yeah, he'll take some plate mail and start working it. And he'll just give him, like, the short swords, like, the smaller weapons, <coughs> like, axes, all that kind of stuff that's easier on him. <laughs> yeah, essentially, at the sign of all of this, uh, you definitely see that. Uh, Sasa. Mm -hmm. Hear our banter back and forth. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I will enter then. And I will be like, Bell! And I will see like them working really hard, and I will be like, never mind! And she's just gonna like stomp into a corner. You'll see, Bell. Okay, so picture this. Uh, I don't know, does the Master Smith have like gloves that he uses to take things out of the forge and stuff? Absolutely. Alright, Bell doesn't use them. He just bare hand goes in there because he has fire resistance. He just goes in and grabs that shit with his hand. <laughs> just fucking starts working it. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, this is fun. <laughs> and he'll be like, hey, Sasa, it's okay. What do you need? Uh, As she's stomping to the corner, she's just gonna stop. She's gonna say, I learned to do something, but I can't yet. And she's gonna try to summon the cannon, and then he just like starts summoning and just fizzles out. 
Okay, did um, you learn that today? <laughs> yes. I guess. And she's just gonna, like, grab, like, pieces of scrap metal. I assume she just, like, goes into, like, a, a cabinet and just, like, she's very tiny, so she just, like, goes in and starts, like, grabbing metal. Mm -hmm. uh, and she will spend the rest of the time trying to make a tiny metal cannon to okay. serve for reference for her. <laughs> okay. Vale will help you fire it, and you'll see him just barehand grab it out of the forge yeah. and give it to you. <laughs> I, I assume it's more normal for for Sasa at this point to see that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so she just, like, every now and then she just, like, flies over, like, steals one of your tools, like, uses it, puts it back, <laughs> and, and she gets, like, the cannon done, and she will, like, practice that entire time just summoning a cannon that looks like the one she built. You're going to internalize and visualize what you're trying to summon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And for reference, it will be something like this. Let's see, let me find it. It will be like a super tiny cannon. Uh, I, I'm going to send that in, in the Nightwood channel. Mm -hmm. yeah, because I'm really like thinking of like uh, Heimerdinger's turrets from <laughs> League of Legends. I was thinking no, of no. Oh my god! <laughs> it's just like a tiny cannon, super tiny cannon. I was visualizing the predator like a shoulder. <laughs> no, not yet, not yet. This is this is her first level cannon, right? This is like the the, the beginner's cannon. She'll make a better one in the future. <laughs> this is like yeah, the... she just makes like a super tiny one. Yeah, like uh, oh my god, how's the like. The Americans have this like very tiny like pistol, like revolver, Derringer, or was it like like a snub nose, like a, just a little baby. <laughs> yeah, like vaguely recall like watching some Western movie and was it like this very small, or maybe it was in Django, like this like very small firearm. Yeah, usually they're called like women's pistols or whatever because people would hide them in their dresses and stuff. Something All right. those yeah, I'm gonna say that definitely at at some try it will work. It will be it will and, be successful. And then she definitely is just like trying. She will summon obviously not that size, just a little bit mm -hmm. bigger. But she's just thinking until eventually just like summons it and it just like stays in and like stays there and she's like, I did it. I did it. <laughs> And she's just like g going like on her knees, just inspecting it, just looking at it. <laughs> like it works, it works, it works. <laughs> Look at that picture, <laughs> oh, Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, with big <laughs> cannons, I'm mostly thinking of like Helsinki abridged. Bitches love cannons. Yes. And with Sarah's uh, yes. and like the, I forgot how they were called, but like her like. Like anti tank rifles or something like she's yes, just building. I love that shit. Yeah, she's just gonna like she's gonna summon one and then she's gonna be really happy that she did it and she's gonna spend just like practicing and then at one point she's just gonna point it towards like a piece of like a, a bunch of just scrap metal that is thrown there and she's gonna shoot it and just shoot at it. <laughs> that was just like, hey, hey! <laughs> he goes over and tries to like keep the scrap metal from just like falling everywhere because <laughs> it's force like, damage. It works. Yeah, it works. <laughs> I will celebrate with him. He'll go and get ale from the nearby tavern and bring some for the old man as well, and they'll have a little tiny break from work before they go back to it. All right. I was half tempted to uh, actually uh, at firing uh, Old Smith's reaction will be like <clears throat> This better not shot me in the ass <laughs> or the fairy goes into the molten pool <laughs> I'm just gonna give him a look <laughs> He's just like I will never shoot you it's not like you can catch me anyways. And she just like points the cannon at him, but doesn't she? She just like, like dismisses it. And she just like flies up so he doesn't reach her. <laughs> Phil's like, hey, don't stress him out, please. <laughs> He's darn kids. <laughs> no respect for the elderly. Freaking fairies. 
<laughs> I assume they just like banter together for like a bit. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> All right. But yes, as you continue to work and have a uh, break, uh, the sounds outside coming from the walls suggest that the situation has been um, handled, so the immediate threat has uh, passed. Although... One last thing, and I'm gonna give it to Vale. Especially as you are going to the nearby tavern and back with the ale. Uh, you can give me perception check. Oh yeah. Let me get that up. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> oh no, where ten, boy. Ten sadly yeah, unless... is not enough. Unless you want it to be at the point where I would have keen hearing and smell. <laughs> but I doubt that. Uh, I haven't had my training yet, so... Yeah, I'm gonna say that, yeah, you will get your training. And I'm gonna say, like, you don't see anything, but now you, for a brief moment, your hair on your back, on your neck, stands out. You have this, like, very intense feeling that someone or something is watching you. You just... Your neck snaps to the left or the right, up and down. You have the tiny sensation on the, on the corner of your right that you did catch, like, movement on one of the rooftops. But maybe not. Maybe there's, like, a flicker of the, of the torch. Because you see no... Silhouette and the sensation disappears as quickly as it appeared. Mm. I assume I I wouldn't have been able to caught enough to like follow it because it no, would have been with, like with, just the briefest. With, sadly, with the result of ten. Now nah, you're good. Not really. Yeah, I assumed. Uh, then he would just sort of look around suspiciously and then be like, I. Like, internally, just be like, oh, I guess it passed? Maybe it was just a weird, like, chill. <laughs> it must have been the wind. It must have been the wind! <laughs> Damn rats! <laughs> I wander back. Uh, <coughs> I'll just repeat right. dishonored NPC dialogue. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. They had, like... Shall we gather for whiskey and cigars tonight? <laughs> Yeah. All right, and we're gonna move from you towards Silas. As as you are doing your watch and continuing walking around, uh, from the elder's house you do hear a bell. The bell you recognize as a assembly bell, essentially. That's sometimes used by the guard to announce that you know specific sounds for specific like. Uh, not duties, but uh, shifts. And mm. as it happens, you are a part of the shift that is being called to assemble uh, at the elder's house. Okay. Well, Cyrus just heads there then. All right. <clears throat> so, when you approach, and a uh, quick question. Uh, do you like visited this place? Actually, never mind because this is probably not the first assembly, so you know what it is, and you like know the place how it looks. <clears throat> so obviously, the address house, house itself, as I mentioned, doesn't look exuberant. Uh, it doesn't look rich. It's not a mansion, uh, but the t glowing tree that's growing literally inside of it, and it's like pierced through the. Uh, Roof definitely looks impressive, but as you approach the assembly, it's not big. You imagine that most of the guards are still doing their duty on the walls. Uh, but Captain Lastimosa is uh, present, as with a half, he appears, uh, he approaches with fast uh, pace at the same time as uh, you are, <clears throat> and he. Narrows his eyes as he sees what you see, 
uh, is that uh, essentially Elder doesn't have didn't have that many guests, but not because he had a policy of closed doors. It was pretty easy to actually get a meeting with uh, with the druid, uh, but many people didn't bother him out of respect. He had power, he has power, but he's also old and, well, people like to respect uh, this particular elder that's more on the not cranky side, but more on the grandfatherly warm, albeit somewhat eccentric side. <clears throat> uh, but what do you see is not the elder, uh, but you see that the, uh, the windows and uh, uh, the main entrance are covered in thick, lush green vines, almost like barricading uh, the place. And in front of the main entrance, and basically, apparently, the person that uh, the person that uh, called the assembly is. This young-looking elf, albeit sev with somewhat severe slash broody expression <coughs> on their face, and show two players. I assume the handout showed. Definitely looks edgy as fuck. Yes. Uh, I just uh, want to ask you to, to be completely sure. Uh, do you do anything or say anything, uh, Salis? Or do you, like, proceed with the, like, <clears throat> not protocol, but the... Oh my god, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh... He's standing at attention, waiting yeah. for whatever orders he is to be given. He's still in deep thought. Hmm? Right. <clears throat> However, uh, Captain Lastimosa, like, he's pretty easy to read, so even you would notice that. His bro is furrowed, and he looks at this young elf. And while he stands at attention, he asks, uh, Praetor, where's the Elder? <coughs> to that, the Elf, we imagine that the Praetor is not the name but his rank. Although, uh, I would say, unless you have a different idea, I would say that Silas probably didn't have either much interaction or probably didn't meet in person that elf before. Okay. If he was active in the city, then perhaps he was like attending to the elder away from the prank eyes. Okay. <clears throat> the elder is resting. The elf responds in very dry uh, <coughs> tone, and he shall not be disturbed. Understood. All the uh, further orders or policies will be delivered by me to you. Any questions? And, uh, None that I, will pursue any longer, no. Ideas that you wish to bring, you will bring to me. The Elder is an old man. He is still committing great service to the city. And I will ensure that he remains safe and undisturbed, unless absolutely necessary. Alright. So it's just nodding in agreement. Stay on your guard. Keep your eyes peeled. 
I did hear some bits and pieces regarding the most recent attack. And definitely something smells rotten more than usual. So stay vigilant. Mm. The City of Hope and the Elder counts on all of you. He nods. Anything else? Unless you wish to bring anything to my attention. <clears throat> no. We are dismissed. We are, you can return to your duties. Salutes him. Leaves. All right. When your shift ends, or do you want to do anything during your shift, or do you do anything after your shift ends? Like, do he's going to take a long rest. That's that's what I'll do after his shift ends. Other than that, no, he's strictly following his job. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, essentially, I didn't say it like before during the session because I didn't want you guys to be like some, somewhat distracted uh, by uh, doing a level up. Uh, but I'm gonna say in the coming days, the exact number to be determined if necessary, uh, no more direct danger will come. But there will definitely some things uh, happening, some things that you'll be informed about. Uh, but uh, you'll definitely have time to do a uh, long rest and also take your level ups. And, oh. and with that, uh, Silas, I will have a question to you. If you wish to, uh, because we did that with Vale and, uh, and Sasa, uh, do you have like any idea for like RP fluff reasoning for your level up? What you're gonna? Uh, he get? quit being a guard and p is picking up being a bard. <laughs> He's abandoning being a paladin. <gasps> he is. Yeah. Which instrument? They're probably gonna pick up a guitar. Oh dear. Good stuff. Yeah. Any mus musicians in town? Or haven't got bards this, that can teach this man? Oh, hold on, let me, let me find this. It's purely because of this. Ready. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna. I'm, I mean, definitely there has to be like, uh, I, I, unless uh, I, I mean, I'm gonna say like, even if Silas decides to go for a road that he's completely self-taught because maybe he finds like inner talent in himself or like, like light blessing of uh, like this. He's gonna be college of eloquence, so I doubt there's actually gonna be any musical ability from this person. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, because uh, just as a reminder, arts aren't necessarily musicians. They are just mm -hmm. the bringers of lore. Yeah. Uh, that's You're fine. Epic poetry as well. Yeah. Or you could literally just be a historian wandering around. Arts do that too. Yeah. We're just telling the last tale of this world. <laughs> to be to be fair, that kind of works with the. Uh, background and historical ability that you have. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I can definitely imagine that even if not musicians themselves, because well, music is one of the great ways of like lifting the spirits. Uh, I can definitely see a person that basically great orator, like great storyteller, basically someone that delivers tales of mighty battles and valiant defenses of great heroism that happened during the war, for example. So if needed, Silas would definitely have some sources of inspiration, because I imagine that 
even you at some point, even Silas, like, would probably visit a tavern or so to, like, rest and grab a pint of ale. Or not. It's a pretty solemn dude. I don't know. Oh, I just gotta find a boot. It's gonna find, like, a nice vista and just think about stuff. Mm -hmm. Think about being a bard. <laughs> think about writing. <laughs> <laughs> Think about the power of music. Think about all the And also, I'm gonna add one more thing that, uh, due to the like very, pretty like solid, very easy, like easy compared to the, into the past, victory against the mindless undead. Uh, when Silas comes to his usual baker and asks for the same thing. The baker will actually be the, the baker, and the baker will actually be like no grumbling at all, no grumbling at all. Basically, I can say that for the next uh, couple of days, the city is definitely in, like in the heightened spirits because sure, the danger is still out there. They are reminded that the danger exists; it didn't go away. But if the things will continue as they are, well. Perhaps there really is hope, So, Yeah. That's freaking cute. Baker will definitely, like, happily bake for Silas his usual pie. Huh? Without too much grumbling. Alright, so <laughs> Silas goes for Bart College of Eloquence. Actually, I'm gonna be honest, I already updated my entire mm -hmm. sheet. <laughs> uh, I was just like, I'm just not gonna use this until I'm officially level 3. <laughs> but I just added all of it for reuse. Uh, here we go. Uh, I want to, like, be double check because... Uh, I don't think... I, I'm not sure if I did something uh, wrong, because when I was copying stuff from Foundry, I did so mm -hmm. that Silas had, like, you know, paladin class levels. So I'm not sure if, like, basically remaking your character, or... Or just, like... I have D&D &D Beyond in a bunch of books. I, really, I can just... I'm just doing it there. Yeah. All right. Just so you know, I like I look at the module, but I cannot figure out like how to do the D and D Beyond integration, and I had never used D and D Beyond. I don't have an account there, so D and D Beyond doesn't work for DMs when you're uh, when you're on Foundry. You can't you can't like integrate it with you because you're running it as a program. Like it doesn't work for the DM. It only okay. works for the players, pretty much. Yeah, it's. It's the same with Pop-Out. Pop-Out only works for us. You don't get the chance to use it either. Oh. Okay. Well, probably for the next... I, okay, so in that case, I might try to basically download the module and activate it and see if that works for you. I mean, still, I'm, I have it open and I can click on everything. Uh, speaking of, I have eight first-level spells prepared at all times. Damn. Okay. Well, not there. <laughs> but only three slots, so. <laughs> Warlock be like. <laughs> <laughs> I know so many spells. I have two slots. <laughs> Oof. Uh, Sasa, I know from the talks that you are going with, uh, well, the first level of artificer going for the artillerist. Yes, I'm going artillerist. So please. <clears throat> oh, let me roll this. Oh yeah, and as uh, just a reminder that uh, for HP, you know, roll. Oh, right. If you if you get below average, take average. And I'm gonna assume for you, Veil, like third level of Blood oh. Hunter. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> ah, it's fine. Uh, 
so yeah, besides uh, keen sand or keen smell, uh, anything <laughs> interesting that Vale gets for third level? I get to turn into a werewolf. <laughs> I get the ability to turn into a werewolf. <laughs> right. Which is pretty great. Um, and I actually have art for for when it happens. Oh, oh god. Sasa, would you consider Vale and you to be good friends? <laughs> so it determines what my RP will be. <laughs> I don't know if Lily's there. They're fucking dead. Right? Yeah, it's like their decision, but I would say... I, I would be leaning towards it because you are both native yeah. and you are both like with the background stuff, with the bonds that you had like mm -hmm. similar, you know, upbringing, uh, you know, crafting, artisan stuff. Mm -hmm. So definitely yeah. after Vale like has his little, his training montage. <laughs> And then passes out out of exhaustion for the sheer uh, effort that I have to put forth for that. <laughs> um, he's going to feel more connected to like the Lycan curse and more control over it. Um, and when Lily gets back, if they're back now, I don't know. You're back? Okay. Would you consider Vale and Sasa to be good friends? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Then Vale is going to say, hey, come what? over to you. You know how you did that thing with the cannon? Yeah. I think I also learned something. But like, what? come here. <laughs> and he's going to basically go to like wherever they train. I don't know if it's like a, an old warehouse or wherever the whatever old building they train in. Uh, her, him and Forenza. Uh... I would say that Firenze definitely gives me like no slightly noble vibes. So mm -hmm. she has like this, not exactly looking great, but it's not like a ruin, but mm -hmm. like a average size mansion. And there's like this underground mm -hmm. training chamber. <laughs> He'll like take you to this mansion, open like the cellar door on the side of the mansion, and be like, come here, come here. <laughs> That's just like, you got a blood cannon? What? No. <laughs> he's gonna go man? down. He's gonna go down, and he's gonna say, "Okay, you can't tell anybody about this because they could freak out." Uh, okay. But I can do this now, and he's going to. You'll see him sort of like, he sort of holds his head because it kind of hurts for a moment, and he sort of crunches in, and then you'll see his form grow, and he sprouts fur, <laughs> and he turns into a freaking werewolf. Here, um. Uh... He's just like slyly backing off. Yeah, like it's Flying it's back. pretty terrifying because he's also um there's fire coming out of him. Uh, there in the night watch. Tiefling werewolf. Yes. Oh, fuck. I'll be there. And he'll activate his crimson right and you'll see all his claws and teeth start glowing with fire. <laughs> she just like has her hands on her chest. Just like a very warrior expression, and just like backing off like slightly, and then suddenly you see a little cannon form in front of her as she's backing away. <laughs> He'll dismiss his crimson right and then say, hey, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it's okay, I'm still in control. <laughs> okay, you're still there? Yeah, it's still me. <laughs> okay. And then he'll transform back. He'll say, I can do that now. <laughs> yeah, and I see what, what people will freak out. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm, I, don't think I'm going to be using it inside the walls, really, at all. At least, hopefully not, but... Yeah. That's a I'm cool just still worried. <laughs> Sorry for interjecting. Also, no, also, yeah, that art is really fucking sick. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I drew that literally today, and I was finishing it when we were doing the session. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's some dedication and skill, like, holy shit. <laughs> Whenever I am focused on something, I draw really fast, so... <laughs> Alright. Uh... Bail. Yeah? Would you consider yourself sturdy? Uh... In what sense? Cannon-proof. 
Oh god, okay. Yeah, he'll still be in werewolf form and he'll say, okay, fine. And he'll like, <laughs> sort of like, um, like put his hands to, like out as if like, just fucking shoot me. <laughs> I, assume that, I assume they will be into like training together, just like sass up with a cannon and trying to evade werewolf. <laughs> yeah, because he has heightened, he is resistant to anything that's not silver. Yeah. So. Uh, you can shoot him as much as you want. <laughs> yeah. All right. And also, you can play like hide and seek because he's also training his own senses as well. So. Hide and seek. I mean, I don't yeah. have still, so. Still. Right. I'm regardless. actually yeah. curious how would that work. If you guys want, uh, I would see like. <laughs> Like basically, uh, Sasa's perception versus uh, Vale's like sneaky beaky, or wait. Oh no, it's the other way around. Uh, he's trying to sense her. Oh right, <laughs> because, because of I the, have uh, keen the hearing and smell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, actually, roll stuff for me. I, I might open. Oh, wait, no, I'll I might open the. I mean, I can go for. I got her. Sure. And then sure. I got. Perception had advantage. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Before you even finish like hiding, I'm like hi. <laughs> yeah. It's just like ah, you'll never find oh. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> okay. She will dismiss her cannon and she's gonna say, Okay, I wanna try something with you. Okay. She's gonna see it on his head. Okay. Grab like grab the horns like a like a like a like ratatouille. Yes. And she's gonna <laughs> and she's gonna say, okay, I'm gonna put something on his shoulder. Don't get scared of it. Okay. I'll look at his shoulders, waiting for something to appear. And on, his, on the right shoulder, I'm gonna put a flamethrower. Oh my god. <laughs> he'll turn on his uh, crimson right, and he'll just be like, yes. Yes! <laughs> Power! <laughs> Unlimited fire. fire! Yes! Burn them! <laughs> Alright, All right, we're gonna be running around like little miscreants. Just little arsonists. Freaking fire brigade. <laughs> oh no, the freaking anime was the fire force. Fire yeah. Force, yes. Fire Force, yeah. No. Okay. Alright. Oh, cool. Give me a moment. Uh, think of something. Uh, we won't be going for too much longer because I also don't want Derp to like miss too, too much. Uh, he did write me on PM that sadly he won't be able to <clears throat> make it, uh, but hopefully, yeah. hopefully we'll have like full full squad uh, next week. And as a reminder, that I believe like uh, yeah, next week I'm good, but the week after that, so at the end of the month and at the start of the next <laughs> one, we. 99% won't have a session because even if I will be back home, uh, I probably will be either hangover or exhausted or both. Fair. After Fair. Uh, after the <laughs> understandable. <laughs> Fair and valid reasons so, to call a session. Well, actually, I'll maybe have a question. So, uh, without going like into too many details of the scene, but what's will be happening is that uh, well it will be mentioned that uh, one of the advanced scout teams uh, the one that was assigned essentially to like your area basically that was responsible for warning up also you your checkpoint you guys um, didn't report like some days have passed and they didn't like call back and mm. their search for volunteers to see if you know, they can be found. Uh, not sure if 
you guys, your characters would be interested, would find a reason to engage with that. Yeah, uh, that's what I definitely want to see. Yeah, they would be interested. Right? So it's just like, a chance to test my cannon! <laughs> <laughs> Vale is just like genuinely concerned. So. <laughs> uh, honestly, for Silas, if Sil if someone wouldn't have an idea, I like have a reasoning for why Silas would would maybe be interested. Uh, because you do like train of thought is that assuming they are not dead, uh, if they are still alive, they probably want like. If they cannot return, they probably found like a other place to hide, and out there, other places to hide means probably some kind of ruins. Well, that's the thing. Uh, I mentioned this before when you were asking many yeah. times. I was like, no, Sills has no interest in. Ruins, oh, uh... but his his attachment and connection with both, uh, I believe, episode Ale as well as Sasa. Sorry, that's my brain there. To follow. Oh, you're fine. You guys kept asking that, and I kept saying no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I now that I like my. I, you're fine. I'm not. F I'm. I'm still feeling better today, but for the past week, I think I either. I don't think it's COVID, but I might be like. It's getting colder here, so it might be like minor cold or something. So, my brain tends to like be, be mushy, mushy. So probably yes, Silas would hear that uh, Vale and Sasa are like. Definitely will be volunteering to that uh, expedition slash rescue mission in the best case scenario. Hearing that, yeah, he'd probably follow the two of them. Just because they tend to get into situations, it seems. <laughs> Join us for a new situation. And honestly, I would imagine that Buster will also be going for it. To to not allow a fellow uh, members of the Night Watch to be lost in, to, to the darkness on his watch. He do be a I good know. boy. And he would definitely have a chance to like hear about it because he he's a warforce, so even though like mechanically they can be healed with like healing stuff, yeah, we did say that uh, through like bond bonds that he can come to for uh, blacksmithery to like dent not dent out but I'm still thinking of the word like uh, basically fix the his like armor or whatever mm -hmm. damages there are so definitely hear about it. Uh, okay, so we do have hold on. Uh. Wait, I have a question. Quick question, Brent. Mm. Does Vale have resistance to force damage? No. Okay, well, fuck you. My camera does force wait. damage. Yeah, I know it does. Here, wait. Let me check again. Now, I'm not exactly sure about DND. I know in Pathfinder, like force damage trumps almost everything. Like you, you need to have specific force damage, like uh, resistance to actually like. Other the stuff, but I'm not. I cannot recall from the no, top I'm of my head. No, I'm not resistant to magic. I'm not resistant to magic. It's just physical damage. I see. I see. As long as it's not silver, mm. physical it, damage. It's something similar. Things do have some resistance. It's just that, um, I guess, force is very uncommon type of damage. So mm -hmm. that's that's pretty much what, how it works in Five E. Mm. But yeah, I'd probably get the shit beat out, no, beaten out of me. Yeah. Uh, with that cannon. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. Just give me a moment because I'm responding to uh, Derp so that he's aware what will be happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, so that I do not forget. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, stinger for this particular session uh, we see a certain scene from a different perspective uh, first uh, we see from higher vantage point 
uh, somehow slightly, not some <laughs> fucking hell, I did the same mistake, Silas, uh, slightly hobbling uh, along the street doing his uh, shift that suddenly looks around almost as if noticing something and the perspective quickly uh, recedes back with a, a scoff. That's the closest equivalent of a sound you can think of. Uh, before the scene changes again, and there's a different, <clears throat> different perspective again of a high vantage point. But this time, the perspective, the vision, the sight focuses on Vale, that is returning from a tavern towards the blacksmithery, holding. Uh, holding hail, and now, as the we do not see the entire uh, figure, it is humanoid, uh, but the sound it the, that escapes its mouth, it's very amused, dark, guttural. Chuckle turning into growl. Mm. And while we do not see the exact characteristics uh, on the face, uh, the very abundant facial and chest hair on the like slightly open upper uh, torso. Uh, in terms of coloring, gives a feeling of twilight. Hmm. I smell a fucking werewolf. <laughs> I'm gonna beat the shit out of him. And the figure satisfied dog dog disappears from the from the rooftop. I'm for dog fighting. Ah, uh, actually, <laughs> sorry. One last thing. Uh as we look slightly downwards, uh, we do see that their hands, they are sharpened, the, the end, the fingers are sharpened, almost like close. And there is, not f not super fresh, it started to acolyse, uh, but they are bloodied. The hands, the claws are bloodied. Ah, uh, I don't like this. Uh... Kali, you do recall when you asked, and I did say that uh, the Hunter's Bane doesn't activate because it was not an undead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Angry. <laughs> Dog angry. <laughs> right. I turn into a werewolf. I climb the nearest roof. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so I think I have a solid idea what's gonna be happening uh, next week. Uh, do you have any questions slash suggestions? Mm. Anything that I should think about or consider doing? I think if I go up there and Awu, he'll Awu back on instinct and then give away his position. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Why? Why I'm trying? I, I, this is one of the reasons. No, I'm you're good. And this is campaign is I try to practice the often advice that other DMs are giving that try to go for yes and as a response to <laughs> players and not not like straight no, but. <laughs> I don't see this particular <laughs> fellow like doing this particular thing. Okay. Yeah, it's a joke. I, 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 imagine that, I imagine that. I imagine. I imagine that there will be some mind games because I have vague ideas for their uh, not aspirations, their uh, motivations Goals. for basically mm. attacking Vale and doing what they did. Hmm. And now that they are back. Actually, before you disappear, because that was something that... Uh, I mean, if you want, we can talk about it later through PMs, but... 
initially the initial idea i had was that as far as anyone knows like this city of hope is like the last bastion remaining and i did like mm -hmm. so particular bit uh, in uh, on your backstory it's not like like because the war lasted a while so other settlements did stand for quite uh, a while like for example Captain Tom Lastimosa, who was supposed to be like a player character, but uh, due to scheduling issues, that player is not playing, but they are, they were fine with me using the character as an NPC. Uh, so their backstory, like they, they are, they come from a different settlement uh, that something happened to it and it's like most likely gone. Um, I mean, if you really want to, like, I can like adjust and say that Probably, yeah, there is like a different place where Vale's family is present. Uh, I was thinking it more along the lines of, um, like, he is from here and his family uh, is here, uh, but he's kind of ostracized from them. Like removed. Because, I mean, yeah, that that's because complete, they're just scared of him. Yeah, that's that's completely fine. I was just like slightly confused by the like description, but yeah, that that's completely, com yeah. completely, absolutely uh, fine. Yeah, just because they they've seen him transform before he got the hunter's bane, so he was like not really in control and had to be subdued, and so yeah. they just he just tries to avoid them to not scare them. So. Yeah, and obviously there's no moon really, so mm -hmm. fun stuff like how the like when the transformations, not control transformation, happens. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, and that's that's absolutely uh, fine. And speaking of family, because I did forget, like I I'm not exactly sure if I had like like uh, regards to say Sasa, like regards to family, immediate family. Did we like say that basically your parents left or they died? I know there's a sister in the. You have a sister in the city, but uh... I don't think she will know where her parents are because she will be like, "Okay, the master he took care of me and he did." Okay, teaches so me. status unknown. Yeah, status unknown. Okay, uh, do you have an idea, or do you you are fine with me like living up to me like what they were doing in life? If you want me to like work, like, try to do something plot-wise regarding to them, or not really. It would be cool if, if you could do it that way, it's an actual surprise for me too. <laughs> yeah, because I'm f I do have an idea, like, what they were involved with, and... And I think it kinda, like, you being an artificer, it... It kinda works. I mean... I mean, I hope it will be cool. We'll, we'll see. I've like learned that often when the, the idea is in your head, if you think they sound cool and you act, like play them, like activate them, and in practice, like not really, <laughs> the results vary. Yeah, okay, so that is unknown. And. Just one last thing regarding the order of the Lycans, basically the Blood Hunters. Uh, mm -hmm. I I got a feeling, and correct me if I'm wrong, that essentially we are treating this werewolf order stuff as like a secret on the more of the secrecy side. More of the secret side, like the the watch knows of them, but not so much the normal people because of like the fear of panic going out. So outwardly, they would be more so. Shown as like a specialized group of guards, <laughs> rather than lichens. So a okay. little undercover. Okay. In that regard, I'd say. Okay. And then I do not know how Brett does it, but I will have to like figure out like how to set the the the, the thing for changing tokens. Although I mean, now that I get change permissions, you should be able to like. Actually, hmm. Yeah, Are you talking to... about the like um, token to, shift like... that he does with someone? Yeah, yeah. Mm, okay. Although, I can research that. Although that might be still like basically something that he does manually. 
but oh well, I will. Ha I might think of this uh, about this for like before the next next week. Mm -hmm. If not, it's fine. But yeah, I think that is a pretty good. And to pause. Oh. Thank you for the session. Thank you. Despite for the, for the well, all your stuff. I hope you enjoyed these two hours. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs>